the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, good morning to everyone, everyone online, everyone in person. What a joy it is to celebrate this Mass with you all in honor of St. Joseph. In the Diocese of San Jose, we celebrate 40 years of anniversary. St. Joseph is the father to us all. It's also the year of St. Joseph. And Pope Francis declared that today we begin the year of the family as well. We are dedicated to the family, and Joseph is the head of the family. So we come, most of our uh, community is here, able to uh, preside with you, Deacon Seth, soon to be ordained, Father Matthew, our chaplain, Father Thomas, Father Simon, and Father Brian. It's a great pleasure to be here and celebrate this Eucharist. Those who are at home with their daddies um, having Mass and breakfast, we'll see you later on campus and for all of us gathered here. So let's prepare our hearts for the celebration as we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Because it's a solemnity, we declare and proclaim the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your Church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You can be seated now as we listen to the readings. reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, When your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. The son of David will live forever. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness, for you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. The Son of David will live forever. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. The son of David will live forever. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. 
the son of David, will live forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants, that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift, and that the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham who is the father of all of us, as it is written. I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. Thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, O Lord, they never cease to praise you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who was called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. At the beginning of Mass, Father Anthony mentioned four things that we are celebrating today. Can we remember what those are? We're celebrating St. Joseph. That's the solemnity of St. Joseph. What else are we celebrating? We're celebrating the year of St. Joseph. Yes. We're celebrating the anniversary of the foundation of the Diocese of St. Joseph. And the last one, we're celebrating the fathers, can they remember? The year of the family. Well done, Father Thomas. The year of the family. We're also celebrating a fifth anniversary, one year of COVID-19. <laughs> we weren't here last year, Ms. Neumeyer was reminding me. We were all at home. And it seemed like a, an exciting thing at the beginning. Yay, no school, right? And then, oh, school online, right? Mm. We had to deal with a lot of uncertainty it was a big challenge, wasn't it? 
It was difficult. Yeah. And St. Joseph, too, he had to deal with a lot of difficult things. He had a lot of challenges. Now, Deacon Seth, in the reading, the gospel reading, he mentioned a big challenge that Joseph had. Can you remember what that was? Yes? Yes. Before he took Mary into his home, she was found to be pregnant. And St. Joseph didn't know how. Right? So it was a big challenge for St. Joseph. Right? He wasn't sure what to do. In fact, he had decided that maybe better to leave Mary alone. Because I think he knew this was coming from God. And he was like, whoa, I'm not worthy to be a part of this miracle. I'm just going to step away quietly. And then what happened? He was asleep. And Emma, what happened? Do you remember? The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Exactly well done, Emma. And told him to take Mary as his wife. So what's the lesson for us? Joseph, who's got a lot of uncertainty in his life, Mary's pregnant, then later they have to go to, to Bethlehem. That wasn't the plan. And then after that, do you remember where they had to go? He was planning to go back to Nazareth, but there was another dream, and the angel told him to go to what country? Anybody remember? Yes. Egypt. Well done, Father Matthew. I think... There should be a little prize for our blonde head in the back. They went to Egypt. That wasn't the plan. And then he was going to come back to Bethlehem, and the angels appeared a third time and said, no, don't go to Bethlehem. Go to what? No, they were coming back from Egypt to Emma. Not quite Jerusalem. Where did Mary and Joseph, where were they from? What was their hometown? Starts with N for Nicholas. Nazareth, well done. So they went back to Nazareth. So you can see in St. Joseph's life, a lot of uncertainty. Right? And that, I think that resonates with us, doesn't it? A lot of uncertainty in this year. What does Joseph teach us? What can we learn about how to deal with these uncertainties in our life? Well, I think the big lesson is to use our eyes now we've all got eyes don't we? we've got two eyes right but we also so we've got the eyes of our body right but we also have other eyes we have the eyes of our heart our heart we have the eyes of our heart right? and how do we use the eyes of our heart well we use it through faith Imagine, and dads who are with us or are following at home, imagine Joseph holding the baby Jesus. That would have been pretty special. Did Joseph see God? What did he see with his human eyes? Well, he saw a little baby. But with the eyes of his heart, with the eyes of faith, he realized that he was holding the Son of God. He used the eyes of his heart. He used his faith. So our fathers, our men, we need to exercise our faith. And a way we can do that is in our work. There was a really good quote that I read the other day, which I can't seem to find on this homily. Ah, here it is. It said, it's not what a man does that makes his work sacred or secular it's not what a man does it is why he does it joseph what was what profession was joseph what did he do was he in the, was he an accountant was he a stockbroker was he a, what was he what was saint joseph what did he do for a living yes in the pink pink mask dear pardon me big big voice he was a carpenter. Well done, Zia, Father Matthew. Another prize for Zia. He was a carpenter. Right? So, in a sense, a very humble profession. 
I'm sure he was very good at it, but he exercised his faith because he knew why he was doing it. Why was he being a carpenter? Because he needed to make money to provide food and shelter for his family, for the Son of God and the Blessed Virgin Mary. Even us priests, we need to be careful. We are involved in the sacred all the time, but we could even make that work secular if we, if we were to forget why we celebrate Mass, why we hear confessions. It is not what we do, but why we do it that makes it holy. That was for the fathers. Now a lesson for the boys and girls. How can you exercise the eyes of your heart? Well, I think you can do it very easily. And Jesus and Joseph, they teach us by being obedient. Being obedient. Joseph, he was obedient. Three times the angel told him, do this. And what did Joseph do? He did it. Take Mary as your spouse. Joseph took Mary as his spouse. Go to Egypt. Joseph went to Egypt. When you're playing your video, go video games at home, and dad comes along and says, remember your chores, time to take out the trash. You take out the trash because you're being obedient, even though it's hard. Remember, it wasn't easy for St. Joseph either. So today, as we celebrate this big solemnity and feasts and the fathers, we're going to go out for brunch. So we're going to celebrate so as we celebrate saint joseph let's not just celebrate with a nice meal or something special let's especially celebrate by imitating not just the eyes of his head but what the eyes of his heart i didn't hear you very well the eyes of his well done so when mom and dad or your teachers or father matthew ask you to do something what are you going to do we're going to do it, like, just like St. Joseph. And I'm finished with a quote from our Vicar General of the Diocese of San Jose, Father Howe. Mary and Joseph had no experience of a pandemic, no COVID-19 back in those days, but their lives were disrupted both by God's call and by events in their family. Yet they learned to live with uncertainty to walk with faith and hope and not by sight. Amen. We stand. Because of the solemnity, we profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. And the third day he rose again, accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from unto Gen judge of the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the full and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
We present our prayers to the Lord knowing that he hears us in our needs today on the Feast of St. Joseph. God may be pleased to increase faith and understanding in the catechumens who are initiated by holy baptism in the coming Paschal Solemnity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. That peoples in need may find help and that peace and security may be firmly established everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are afflicted or suffering temptation may be strengthened by his grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us may learn to distribute the fruits of self-denial for the good of those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for our Canyon Heights community, for all of the dads we celebrate today, and for those in our Diocese of San Jose. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing us in our needs, for giving us the gift of Joseph as a father on earth to your son, in whom we ask all these things, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We pray, O Lord, that just as Saint Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the solemnity of Saint Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you a spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim.
indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Oscar our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <coughs> Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the final blessing. Father Matthew has an announcement. I was actually going to go after the final blessing because this is going to get going to get ex going to get exciting real quick. So, dads at home, uh, I had a quick message for you, but before your message, I have another message. Boys and girls, first of all, boys and girls, well done today. Kind of a long special mass, and I saw everyone sitting very well with their prayer hands together, participating. I'm sure at home too, uh, you did a great job being there with your dad. You all know Father Anthony as he's been the chaplain of the school and he's helped the school for a long time. Did you know that also he's in charge of all the priests? We live in one house. And he's in charge of everybody. He's our superior. And today in the with the Legionaries of Christ, we celebrate our superiors on, on the Feast of St. Joseph, the Solemnity of St. Joseph. So imagine, you know, Father Thomas, Father Simon, Father Matthew, Father Brian, Father Seth. He's only been here a few months. He's not easy. <laughs> and Father Anthony has to deal with all of us. So let's give Father Anthony a little round of applause, even though it's nice. <laughs> Just like Father Anthony at home, uh, we have uh, our dads who look after us. And two messages for the dads. On the one hand, dads, we look at St. Joseph today, and there's a certain consolation knowing that we will never be quite as awesome as him. If any of you suffer from that problem, we can talk. But the fact is, none of us will ever be quite that. So we know that we're always on a path to be more like him. So therefore, today is a special day that we pray for our dads. We pray that they can model more and more uh, St. Joseph, who is you know, there with the Holy Family, protecting Mary and Jesus. So we're praying for our dads today. But second of all, we appreciate our dads because they're the dad that God gave us, and they're the best dad we could possibly have. I was talking to my dad last night. He's Joseph, so today is his day. And we were just talking about movies and how every airplane has a rating like how if the wind is coming too fast it can't land if it's coming across the runway 
anyway, silly stuff, but I, I was just filled with joy being able to talk to my dad, because I love my dad, he's the dad God gave me. So each of us, dads, we appreciate you. You are the best dad any of us could have because you're the dad God gave us. So we're praying for you today, and we appreciate you very much in your mission. So uh, that's it. Round of applause, too, for the dads at home. Special thanks to our St. Joseph, Mr. and Mrs. Nguyen back there, for Kevin, Mr. Pham, and for our lovely choir. Thank you for singing and making this Mass so beautiful. For those of us here and those at home, thank you. We appreciate you using your gifts for God's glory this way. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.